right, everyone. So awesome news. Uh, finally got the ultimate Taiga axe um, designed, forged, and released to the public. So uh, if you're thinking about buying an axe, I'm gonna explain to you why I like this one. If you've already bought one of these, I'm gonna explain its use uh, and some of the nuances of this Evenki style Taiga axe that I've personally designed and um, together with Broad River, Broad River Forge and Old Country Leather uh, brought to fruition. I'm really excited about it. As many of you know, uh, ever since the show came out, I've been uh, looking to get these axes in people's hands because it's these Siberian style axes with the Evenki um, modifications and uh, North American craftsmanship is just to me the ideal axe. Uh, I'll explain to you why but excited to finally be able to have these out. It took a lot of work. I spent uh, years you know trying to find different forges trying to find different ways to get it produced and either you know often more often than not it ended up that the the quality that I was looking for just wasn't there I had uh, you know, I actually spent a couple thousand dollars getting them made uh, in Eastern Europe got those and I just wasn't quite happy with them I went down another rabbit hole it ended up that they were gonna forge them in a country that they wouldn't tell me <laughs> so that wasn't gonna work finally I was able to find um, uh, find Brad at Broad River Forge and he really saw the vision as I described to him what I wanted and all the little nuances and features and man we've really nailed it I think I'm super excited so uh, let me just tell you about some of the features um, so first right we partnered with uh, Old Country Leather they're out of Ontario uh, so out in Canada they live on a farm they do all this stuff by hand we designed this sheath um, so some of their creativity got the logo on there ingenuity adaptability resilience my signature on there i stand behind these axes these are awesome <laughs> uh, and it's just easy to put on easy to cinch up so real simple to use the the design on the sheath itself is made so that your you know these these little leather straps don't go through on the inside so you're not going to accidentally cut it with your axe which will be very sharp hopefully keep it nice and sharp <laughs> um, also same thing this is uh, water buffalo hide all of this leather so it's real tough stuff same with on this um, <clears throat> handle guard here same with the wrist strap here um, all of it handmade so moving along um, we got it stamped with my logo on the axe head, the moose in honor of the moose that I was able to get on alone and all the ones that have fed me over the years. Awesome animals, I really like them. Got Brad's logo here for his forge and the date. These axes are meant to be passed down for generations and I always liked um, having the date on my axe so I could look back and be like, oh wow, you know, 1956 or whatever, this is cool. <laughs> uh, so we did that, so you'll be able to hand it down for generations. Um, the weight, the shape, it's it's all really been thought through. It, the, the length of the handle is long enough that you can really swing it and fell trees, but with a taiga axe, it's not only used for felling. So. The handle needs to be short enough. You can always also carry it around with you, use it. You're not going to be hitting yourself when you're chopping things, uh, you know, more bushcrafting style. It's a, a universal ax, really. Not just for felling, but great at felling. Not just for bushcraft, great at bushcraft. Uh, the only ax you really need if you just have one. Um, the handle is, oh, what did we put it at? 28 or so inches long. The uh head is you know around 2.4 2, 2, 2 pounds 4 ounces 2 pounds 6 ounces a little variability as they're all hand forged um so these axes are forged out of 4140 steel which is a uh, we tried we tried a few different iterations i liked it the most because it's tough um 
but also, and you know, holds a good edge, but it's also, you can maintain it in the field, which is incredibly important for a taiga axe. You really uh, need to be able to sharpen it without specialty tools and such. So it has that. Um, some of the features that are unique to this axe are, you know, we have a slide on head. So the eye is designed in a tapered pattern so that we can uh, taper lock this handle in here which is what the Avenki do. I grew to really like that method of putting my handles on because I can, again, maintain them in the field if necessary. And it's just, you're not dealing with a wedge that's coming loose and flying out. Um, so super practical. And honestly, I'm surprised it's not used more often. Although in, you know, in, you, you will find certain, I know there's a Basque ax that uses that method. Uh, and you know in various places around the world there's kind of specialty axes that are built this way i think it takes a lot more it takes a lot more craftsmanship because you don't just have to pump out a bunch of handles that are all the same stick a wedge in them and it fills in the extra space you, we custom fit every handle to every taper so um there there's full contact on every point of the handle and then we hydraulic press them in it's not going anywhere uh so that is a great advantage. I've always liked that. It, it, the eyes on these heads are wide enough that you can slide the handle through and have just the right amount of grip on this handle. It's comfortable to grip still. Um, a lot of heads you'll notice axes, they might have this general size, but you get it and you realize they put a wedge in here and they got a big handle swell here and you can't actually hold it like this and work as you will in the forest when you're living in the forest. So uh, great design for that. Uh, another really important feature of these Avenki axes, and this is that they are sharpened from one side. You see that? So it's got a chisel type grind. Um, this is, uh, you know, something I only encountered when I first went to the Avenki and lived with them. And, uh, it took a little bit of getting used to, but I quickly grew on me and uh, I don't want my axes any other way now. I really like it. I think as you guys try it, you will too. Um, so for a right-handed person like myself, the ax is sharpened from the right-handed side. For a left-handed person that's swinging it left-handed, it's gonna be sharpened from the left-hand side. Um, that allows you to, where uh, it, that, it bites into the wood a little better. It doesn't, your ax isn't gonna flip out like that as much, especially noticeable when you are bushcrafting and carving things like this, which you do all the time when you're living in the woods. Um, so crafting, making whatever it is you're making from a little table to skis, to a trap, to <laughs> skinning poles. It's great for skinning poles. Um, <clears throat> so I've really grown to like it. It's also, super handy in felling trees. When you're falling a tree, uh, your best swing is that right-handed swing like this. You know, then a lot of times it'll come back from the other side, hit like that. It's less efficient of a strike. So the way the Avenki do it, the way I've learned to do it is you pretty much always swing in with your most efficient swing like so, right hand, right hand. You can go around the tree and chop from the, with right-handed swings from the other side of the tree uh, if you need to. I've found usually, in the forest and living, you know, in survival, or whatever, just forest living, you're not generally chopping down huge trees. There's not a big reason to. You're usually chopping down smaller trees, whether you're building shelters, getting firewood, uh, all those sorts of things. Oh, the other thing I want to point out, it's got a nice thin bit. That allows it, this isn't fat here, that allows you to chop deeper. Uh, a lot of people like a wider bit in order to split wood, but that's completely unnecessary. And I'll also show you why later. Um, <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> Another thing I like with an ax, um, I like a big cutting edge. I like, a, I don't know why it, needs, it doesn't need to be narrow. I like that extra room <laughs> for my swing. I like this head shape. Uh, we've bearded it slightly so that we can distribute the weight uh, in the areas we like the most. That's the wider edge, cutting edge, and uh, wider um, pole here that allows a better grip on the handle and more, more contact surface area there. 
Another nuance that's pretty neat, um, I haven't seen in many axes, is, see this? If you look carefully, this is slightly concave right here. The pull, back of the pull of the axe. Um, why is that? It's when you're pounding in wooden stakes, a lot of times you'll get a dead piece of wood, dead stick, pound it into a tree uh, to hang things on, or you might pound stakes into the ground, which you do all the time. If you have a round pole on the back of your ax, you, know, you picture that log, that round pole is gonna split those fibers apart and you'll see they, you know, the top of your stake splits apart. Um, with that concave um, pattern, let's see if I can do that. And then you're hammering that, that pole, it holds those fibers together. Uh, so it's a design feature in a, on this Taiga X that is practical, useful. Again, all these things I've thought through. Um, how, what, where do we go next? The, the neck of the axe is a comfortable width so you can grab it like this. You do a lot of work in the forest, chopping wood and you know, uh, carving, things like that. It's designed to be comfortable to grip and your axe should be comfortable to grip no matter where you're gripping on the axe. There shouldn't be any uncomfortable areas to swing from. The, the blade design is such that from the edge to your pinky is in line, which allows for a more efficient swing um, from that center of the, the blade there when you lay it on a flat surface. I can do it on the bottom of my camera. Point, lay it on a flat surface. That edge will, uh, you know, the bottom of the handle here will meet up with the cutting edge of the blade and that's for maximum efficiency once again when you're swinging. Um, I've added a wrist strap on here. You can take this off. Um, some people might not like it on there. It's really useful in the winter when you're chopping holes in ice. The last thing you want to do is let your axe slide out, fall in the hole, and uh, freeze to death out there. <laughs> you need your axe. So, um, just an extra measure of safety. You can you know, put your hand through here, chop away. If something, if you do drop it, you'll still be attached. Um, if you don't like it, you can always take it off, but I wanted to add all the features with the ax as it comes. I also just want to reiterate here that this whole thing is handcrafted um, from the ground up. It's These handles are, again, made by uh, some fine Amish folks who hand make each handle. Uh, every head is hand forged and custom fit to each individual handle for the maximum um, for best fit and taper lock. When you buy one of these axes you're actually supporting four <laughs> small North American businesses. My own, uh, Broad River Forge, Old Country Leather, and the Amish handle makers that we use. Um, so we all really appreciate that and we all take great pride in what we're making here and I'm really excited for you guys to use these axes and and fall in love with them the way I have. Uh, they're unlike anything else you'll be able to buy on the market. Uh, truly the best axe you can get. So <laughs> uh, let me get on to some using it and showing you a few of the tricks of these particular Taiga axes. So um, just a few rules with an axe uh, that are kind of universal. One is keep it nice and sharp. It is one of the most important tools in the forest uh, and if you have a good sharp axe uh, not only is it safer to use but it it can replace even a knife in a pinch. You know you can skin a whole animal with one uh, really the ultimate forest tool. Um, also when you're swinging <laughs> always use two hands always control it with two hands you know as you start to swing like this and get sloppy that's when mistakes are made and you get injured they are definitely dangerous as you get to use them uh, you you're definitely liable to chop your foot your knee um, <clears throat> you know always be aware if you miss with your axe swing where that axe is gonna end up so uh, just be careful of that um, 
never, this is something I see a lot with people, is they'll be chopping a piece of wood, get a piece of wood here, just directly on the ground, um, right through and hit the rocks. There's no better way to dull your ax. Um, so, you know, if you're gonna cut on, if you're chopping with wood, always set another wood piece of wood down. Here, here you go, a little stick. <laughs> and chop on that wood so your ax is hitting the wood, not the ground. This feels like it might have some fat wood in it. I'll have to look at that. Um, uh, so just a few little notes there. Um, one way to be safe uh, is to chop from your knees. Uh, if you're standing up uh, and you miss your swing, you're a little more likely to hit yourself. Uh, while, especially while you're getting the hang of of using an axe, I recommend chopping chopping from your knees. It's just the axe when you miss is more likely just to hit into the ground rather than swing through and hit your feet. Um, so let's chop this tree down. It's crowded out by the other tree. I'll mind removing it and I'll show you a few tips on on felling a tree with an Avenki style axe. First, clear out your little area. Things aren't getting in your way. So of course it's important to know uh, what way your tree is going to fall. I want this tree to fall this way. So I'm going to chop a little lower on the side I want it to fall and a little higher on the back side. That'll help it to fall that direction. This tree I'm going to try to chop fairly low to the ground to just looks nicer that way. Um, so again, off of my knees and some nice uh, nice right-handed swings. Chopping with uh, a Venki axe with that single grind um, takes a steeper angle than I uh, oftentimes see. You know, you oftentimes see people almost at a 90 degree angle pecking away at the tree. These take a nice steep angle. That, that uh, chisel grind really helps it bite into the tree. And you hit low first and then high, and that'll help you pull that chip out. Uh, and then you're mostly, most of your strikes are gonna be up high at a steep angle with an occasional low one to help the chips fall out. And uh, I'll just show you how that goes kinda. just kind of stair step your way down the tree as you can see here 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 stair step it down we've got it about halfway through um, so I'm gonna go to the other side do the same thing just slightly higher to help it fall kind of towards towards the camera a little bit Now, how much space do I have? Before I fall that all the way, let me show you. So because of the nature of this chopping pattern, it can't fall towards or away from me. It can only fall on that hinge that we've created. So I'm sure I could push it over now. I'll give it a couple more chops and let it fall. So this is kind of how your stump looks when you're done. Backside, front side. And this was the strip hanging in the middle, which you don't want to chop all the way around and you won't know which way the tree's gonna fall. That keeps it falling in the proper direction. Another thing you want to be aware of is when you are behind the stump of a tree, so I'm chopping it that way, I feel like I'm safe, right? Well, depending on the obstacles and the things uh, on the down falling side of the tree the branches can hit the ground kind of absorb the fall and shove the butt of that tree up and back towards where you think you're safe with your head here and boom, can knock you out so <laughs> uh, anyway it's something to be a care be aware of be aware okay so now we're gonna chop this tree in half you know a tree fell in the middle of your path you need to chop it out of the way you know chopping firewood whatever um 
a couple quick things to take note. Don't just start chopping at the middle of the tree. We're gonna take nice wide bites. And ultimately it's gonna be a wedge that end that you end up chopping out of there. Um, so if you start really narrow, you're just gonna have to swing extra times to make through. So start wide as you strike, strike your ax, you pick up the back of it like that and it'll help that wood chip pop out. Um, with the Avenki ground ax, the single bevel grind, this is, the only, this is the only place where I ever sense a disadvantage. All the way in all other aspects, I, fi I find it advantageous. Here, it just takes a little more getting used to because your, gr your strikes aren't exactly symmetrical. This strike is going to be more vertical, whereas this strike is going to be more angled because uh, this is the actual proper bite for that for that bit. Whereas this one, if you if you do the same angle, it's going to want to pop out. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, let's chop through this. I'll show you. Careful on these last hits. You don't want to smash through and into rocks below. So. There we go. All right, so when you're limbing a tree, uh, it's always safest to limb it from the opposite side. So I'm standing here, limb it like so. Um, much safer. I'm not gonna say people aren't gonna limb at the same time. Branches on the same side, but be aware of where you're swinging. Because you start doing this kind of thing and you're definitely gonna hit your foot at some point. So, uh, yeah, best to just limb those branches on the opposite side of the tree. So I'll show you how the Avenki chop firewood. Uh, they always have this lower log here so that if you miss, you hit the log and don't swing through. And then they, again, you're taking advantage of your, of your, see that nice deep chop? You're taking advantage of that chisel grind. Then they roll it, do the same. Just like that, real easy. Now. A lot of times what people do, I'll show you why it's not as good, is they will, you know, chop from two directions, which you can do, but, but you are wasting look at all that, look at all that firewood you've just chopped out of there, see that? Chopped all that out of there and wasted it. Whereas this, it's all there. So uh, that's how they do it. And then splitting it. There's a couple ways to split it. One would be, these are for these smaller pieces, which is often the type of watt firewood you get, especially in Northern forests. Uh, for particularly stubborn pieces, it is this is the way they do it and you'll just hit right in the middle here pop that apart if you miss you hit this tree Whoop. miss boom just like that so you pop it back up there boom just like that pop it back up there boom you don't have to you don't have to swing too hard this isn't like about power 
about hitting it right there, uh, right here towards the edge. There's also, you kind of want to hit it ideally more towards the end rather than way in the middle. Um, if you picture, you know, ripping a piece of cardboard or something, if you grab in the middle and pull, it's harder if you start at the top, the whole thing rips. Kind of similar here, so feel free to aim a little bit towards the top. We got this hill, everything's rolling down. And again, it's not about strength, it's about accuracy. Make quick work of a bunch of firewood like that. They also do, oftentimes, they'll set it like this and then just be real. Again, you're just doing it accurately. Hold your... Do a lot of that. See again how your ax is hitting that log. That splits it up like that. Or just wet wood. There. This one isn't gonna work like that. And without using too much energy, just slowly, gently chop up a bunch of wood like so. This is one of the places I really like this this grind. It's when it's whenever you're doing this kind of work, which if you're living in the forest, spending a lot of time in the woods it's uh very often that you do this kind of work and it's the type of work that uh, most axes aren't as well designed for so anyway just this kind of chopping say you're trying to build something you want a nice straight flat surface here sometimes it's helpful to go first and make some notches like that that way if the grain has a tendency to split like into the wood like that you can counteract that. So then we just go down. And that chisel grind just bites in there nicely. Allows you to a lot of control in this situation. Another thing is when you're living in the forest, you often find yourself skinning poles, whether for shelters, you know, for teepees all the time with the Evenki, but for all kinds of things, you're skinning poles. And again, it just helps you do that more efficiently um wind skinning poles also just side note if you're living in a teepee you want to get rid of all these little nubs like that because those will uh poke a hole in your tarp or your hide or your canvas whatever it is anyway skin those logs right up no problem you know if you if you do find maybe you have smaller hands or you're going to be working for a long time you can slide that down or even take it off. That helps your grip if you have smaller hands or if you just want the extra, the extra comfort of, you can definitely do that. Make it a little better feel. Yeah, she just planes that wood right down. That's a basic overview. I could go into, of course, all these techniques a lot more. I wanna show you uh, one last thing, and that would be splitting larger pieces of firewood. Uh, there's also a trick to that, and then it'll give you a good robust toolkit to get started with your Taiga axe. Again, I think you're going to like them once you get the hang of it. All right, the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, is splitting rounds. Um, so a lot of times, especially if the wood is easy to split, uh, it's more efficient and a lot easier to split up big piles of firewood with an axe and with a maul because a lot of times with that eight pound maul you're just lifting and swinging a lot more weight than you need to split um once you get the hang of splitting properly with an axe you can work through it a lot faster and more efficiently uh what people usually do when they come to split some wood with an axe is they grab it and they just swing and then the axe gets stuck and it doesn't and it doesn't come out or you do split it and your axe goes right through and smashes into the dirt and dulls it so to avoid smashing right through dulling your axe and to help uh, in splitting you hold your axe at about a 45 degree angle and then when you swing you'll hit and the it sends force that direction and encourages it to split but also if it doesn't split 
your axe isn't stuck in the wood. So I'll demonstrate. Uh, so we grab like this. See that? None of those times did my axe stick in the wood. Um, took a few swings, but they weren't heavy, so they didn't take a lot of energy. Let's try again. There, finally. Soft wood, it just chips apart. So anyway, there you go, guys. Uh, a little overview of of the new axe I've released, some of the tips and techniques for, for using it. Uh, you know, I forgot to show you pounding stakes with that concave pole, but that's self-explanatory. Go try it yourselves. Um, <laughs> uh, but I really think you guys are gonna like it. I know I do. I've used a lot of axes and these are the only ones that really do it for me. So <laughs> um, give them a shot. I'd love to hear your feedback, see what you think. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I guarantee you with one of these, you're going to defeat any Wolverine that comes your way. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.